It's all about you. It's all about you, baby. This podcast is sponsored and supported by 365 Days of Breast Cancer dot com. I'm a huge raw ballet fan. And so it was an utter thrill with a smattering of self-indulgence, if I'm being totally honest, to chat to senior ballet master and principal character artist with the Royal Ballet, Gary Avis. Gary enjoyed a long dance partnership with Darcy Bussell and is a huge inspiration to upcoming dancers. It's All About You, the podcast, is in place to help people find a stepping stone out out of a traumatic illness or some severe harsh time that they may be going through. And I was keen to know how that affected Gary and what he used as a stepping stone out of a tricky situation if he was to ever find himself in one. There's two parts to the um, conversation that I wanted to just pick up on. Uh, The first one was the importance of finding a passion and finding your family that thinks the same as you and share something you love. It can't be underestimated, and that's not necessarily always your blood family. Gary talks about the love of the stage early on. It's never too late to stride in a new direction and find your family, as Gary found his stage family. I want to ask you, are you holding back on a passion of yours? The second point I just wanted to pick up on was It's lovely to touch on Gary's generous spirit. How he loves to give back radiates through him. There are ways we can all do that. And I wondered what you could do right now. I never underestimate how that impacts someone's life. Just because you don't necessarily know you've impacted someone doesn't mean it didn't happen. Anyway, listen on to us being big ballet fans and me having the time of my life. Welcome to It's All About You, the podcast, Gary Avis. Hello. <laughs> I'm, um, aside from being thrilled you're here, um, and my cheeks are fit, fit to split, uh, <laughs> to, to be sat chatting to you, uh, we're all intrigued to know more about you. So uh, if we jump straight into the questions, right. my first one I have for you would be, could you tell us a bit more about your background and what took you to ballet? Oh, right. Okay, so I don't come from a ballet background. Um, I was brought up in Ipswich in Suffolk um, with um, a very normal working class family. Um, My parents weren't involved in the theatre at all. Um, There was no sense of dance classes or dance or theatre at all within my family. So um, the reason I first got involved in dance was when I used to go to family parties, my mother um, thought it was a good idea for me to get out of my shell because whenever I went to a family party, I was very, very shy and everybody else would get up and dance and I would be the one in the corner sat there twiddling my thumbs um, and not really speaking to anybody. So my mum thought uh, one summer that it would be a great idea to go to disco dancing lessons. Oh. <laughs> so I started with... Um, Who knew? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I became a regular John Travolta for a, a good two or three years to begin with. And so I was, I, I think I was 11 at the time, so I just hit secondary school. Um, and it was a summer course, and I then got involved with um, a very brief... Uh, theatre production that was happening in my secondary school and a friend's mother came to see it and suggested to my mum after having seen it that uh, maybe I should audition for the local dance company that were doing um, pantos every year and it was a big deal because um, in Ipswich if you were a co-op junior um, it was a big deal because it was you know you were chosen out of the whole town of um, right. youngsters to okay. be involved in the big production that happened every year. So I became um, a cop junior. junior. At the time, I thought it was purely because I was a boy, and they were very low on boys. So, um, but I think uh, once I'd been bitten by the bug, and also I think uh, they were very grateful, obviously, to have a boy within the troupe. 
but um, I just got absolutely absorbed in the whole fascination of being on stage and just the not only the grandeur of it but just I think taking myself away from being Gary Avers yeah I, I like the whole that. thing of just being able to be transported somewhere Different else persona, yeah. Uh, yeah so and I think that's why I've generated myself in in this direction in in the career that I have is because I'm not necessarily Gary Avers usually when you see me on stage I'm usually somebody else that's right yeah. so I think that's um, and I think that was also very important to me when I was a youngster because I was bullied quite severely okay. when I was at school, especially in secondary school. So for me not to be Gary Avis at a time when I was growing up and being accepted into this group of youngsters in this theatre group was a, such a huge you found deal your for family, me. Yeah. So I found another family, yeah. absolutely. So it was the stage really that pulled you to begin with, absolutely. not necessarily ballet. Absolutely. No, there wasn't. I didn't even want to be a ballet dancer. Ballet wasn't even on the spectrum. You didn't for me. even know about it particularly. No, no, wow. not at all. That's amazing. I, um, as far as I want, as far as I wanted, was that I wanted to dance. I wanted to move to music, and um, I wanted to have movement. And I, the whole spectacle of being on stage, I think the stage thing is the thing that was the Pulled bug you. that bit me. Yeah. So that's what sort of um, steered me into the career that I've Which got. Which kind of brings me on to my second question. Uh, for some people, we've all got very interesting life, but I wondered, with something so demanding mm. and being right at the top of the, the ballet tree, as it were, um, was there ever anything else calling you? Or has it been, once you found ballet, was it ballet all the way, or did you... Did you ever want to go back to uh, your disco dancing to, days, yeah, well, you know? Well, the thing is, I, I started the disco dancing lessons. I then was taken into musical theatre, basically with this theatre group. Yeah, yeah. So the thing I wanted to do was musical theatre. So the thing it was that the I, stage, wasn't it? Th it was the stage. Yeah. It wasn't ballet. So when I was... So I did all my training at home in Ipswich right up until I was 16. Um, and then I left Ipswich when I was 16 and went to a performing arts college in Sidcup in Kent um, and I was with the Doreen Bird College of Performing Arts for two yeah, years. Yeah, I know Doreen Bird College, uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. There you go. Um, and uh, after having done two years with them, I had a, a wonderful teacher who said that she felt that I had something very, very special in the classical side of right. my profession and said that she thought I should pursue a career in ballet because she felt that if I wanted to go back to musical theatre, I could do that afterwards. But the technique within ballet would be over sooner than the musical theatre technique. So she said, if you're going to do it, do your ballet first. Yeah. So, so that's what I did. That so um, I went ahead and I auditioned for the Royal Ballet School, which actually was one of those things that had never been on the spectrum at all. I've, it, that's um, insane. So it came from nowhere. Isn't that Absolutely insane? Not. Yeah. So, um, and you know, when she first talked about auditioning for the Royal Ballet School, I just laughed. Because it was one of those things where, you know, I had a dancing times since I was about 12, so, you know, you'd see the advert Likewise, for the dancing yeah, times. Yeah. And at no point did I ever think, of course I'm going to be a, 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 I'm going to be a dancer I'll be a ballet, ballet dancer, yeah. yeah. You, not not on your agenda no. whatsoever. I wanted to be in musicals, I wanted to be, the main thing was, I wanted to be a backing dancer. Okay. Okay. For um, for anything that was on television, or I wanted to be in the Royal Variety performance. Oh, wow. That was the wow. main aim for me. Wow. So um, I yeah. hope you're not disappointed. So, <laughs> no, although I will say I still hunger Do you? to be in a Royal Variety performance. That's amazing. I know that's really ridiculous. That's amazing. But I've never ever been. I came very close. They were talking about doing a section of Beatrix Potter once, right. one when we were doing yeah. it here at the theatre. Um, and they talked about me doing the fox and Jemima Puddle Duck, yeah. um, but it never came, came to fruition. So I, I, you know, I was close, but not that. Oh, well, I wish that so near, at some yet point. So far. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so um, life isn't always a bunch of roses. Uh, we all know that. And part of the reason that I do this podcast is to lift other people and give them um, a place to find some stepping stones to pull themselves through either a trauma or an illness yes. or. Uh, some mental troubles they may have been having. And something that happens with us especially is injuries. Right. Injuries and also the, the balance of of a daily of a day you know, that work life balance is yeah. very, very difficult for us. So. Yeah, and an injury is your life, isn't it? I mean Absolutely. I've been following it's quite a few of the injuries yeah. that you've got going on at the, not you personally but no, within the company. Touch wood. <laughs> yeah. Um it's that's a, a big threat for you. Yes. So I just wondered when you hit a troublesome time how you personally find your way through that? Um, I think because it's 
it's been a part of my makeup um, as being Gary Averson doing what I do since I've been since I was eleven. I think part of what gets me through every day is the disciplined side of it. Right. I was so focused and disciplined right from an early age that I kind of it was almost instilled in me right from the beginning that to achieve the only person that's going to achieve is you yeah and I think you can't necessarily rely on others to get you where you Absolutely. you would ultimately yeah. like to be so the discipline the self-discipline for me was a big huge factor and that's one of the things I try and instill in people when I'm now as a as a senior ballet master and as a coach and a nurturer I always try and make people understand that you know a lot of it, a lot of their performance, a lot of their preparatory stuff has to come from them. I can't give them everything no. because because ultimately they're the ones that are then ultimately going to go on stage and, and, carry that and deliver. Forward, yeah. So. And so, do you think? Where did you find that from? You know, was that instilled in you by parents um, or teachers or my teacher? Okay. My teacher. My my parents were pretty easygoing with um, me wanting to follow my career. I mean, obviously, it was very bizarre for them because it was a career path that had never come before for them in their family so that I think they registered very early on that I was very determined about wanting to have that career path yeah. and also because I think they also recognized that I'd been bullied they also saw that it was a real part of what was going to make me or break me and so um, yeah I think for me it was my teacher because my teacher was very um, aware so she says, and I don't like to say it because I'm not big headed, but she <laughs> said there was a certain different talent there that she saw that there she saw in me yeah. than she did with other local dance yeah. dance uh, students. Yeah. So um, so yeah, I, uh, I and I think you become very dogged about it. I yeah. became very dogged it's about what you wanted. That's what I wanted. Yeah. So um, I also, you know, I say with being self disciplined, you know, you have to have immense focus. Yeah. So, and you have to also balance out what is your work life and what is your, your day-to-day life. You have to have an even balance and you have to be able to register that very early on. And I think that's something that I've slowly had to come to terms with because I'm so determined at what I do and what I, what I enjoy that um, sometimes that overtakes what um, happens on my daily life. So, so yeah, it's... Um, I, 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 I try and be as focused as possible, um, as much as I can, but uh, yeah. So if you're going through um, a tough patch and you're performing, obviously you have to take yourself out of that. So if I'm going through a tough patch, mm. ironically, I come here to the Royal Opera House to watch yes. you guys. <laughs> right. And yes. that lifts me up and it keeps me, go- keeps me warm, I always yeah. say. And you're the people that keep us going as well. I right. mean, if it wasn't for audiences like you, not only in the Opera House, but worldwide, by yeah. having the social media contact. Which by, is immense, isn't it? Which is great, it which is. is how you and I met. It is. You know, had... had or had we not got that facility I think nowadays I think we would feel very lonely I think I, I, we were talking about this um, earlier the other day that I think you know life is very different for performers nowadays because we are out there and, and um, you're accessible, we're very accessible you? yeah. and I think you have to be very aware of that and you have to be very aware that you're ambassadors you are. 24-7 well I always say to everybody that I think you're one of the best ambassadors the Royal Ballet has to be really? honest, just to make you, uh, you really? know, a bit more big headed <laughs> maybe but um, yeah definitely you've got time to spend and chat to people which well, is well you I'm know, very we, lucky I have a very long commute right. so my this is part of my I haven't quite got this right but my work life balance isn't quite correct in respect of I have more um, home life because um, at the moment I'm so focused on my job but in time I think because I did the shift and I moved out to Suffolk which is my hometown um, I do have this very long commute so I am able to access people and, yeah. and do the whole social media okay. thing so it's and you think that's time. made a difference for I you? think it's made yeah. a difference for me and I think it also makes me seem to be more accessible because you know and actually you know that's not to be underestimated because just um, being able to plug it I remember chatting to somebody up in the amphitheatre I'm going back quite a few years now and he started talking about you guys whoever right. it was we'd seen yeah. I think it was Romeo and Juliet and yeah. um 
I said, how do you know all this? He said, because I just talked to them. Now, I don't think he was a big social media buff, but um, he made it his job to yes. reach out to you. Yeah. Um, and I was fascinated by all the stories he had to tell me, you know, and that's, it's really lovely. If you can't be in here every day, no. you know, my ballet feed, uh, my Instagram feed's full of ballet. It's non-stop mm -hmm. ballet, yeah. uh, one thing after the other. Um, and that's a lovely thing to be able to have that. But it's also a lovely thing for us, because otherwise, because I think what we do is so intense. Yeah. and so um, channeled that I think for us to feel and understand and know how much it means to people is a, is a huge lift for oh, us. I think really sometimes yeah. we get so bogged down with, you know, we've got rehearsals, we've got, thing, we've got dates that we have to deliver certain ballets on. Um, and I think we do become really, really kind of bogged down with the day to day. Yeah. And to know what difference that makes to people and what what challenges other people are facing it sometimes makes you go do you know what this doing is, a ballet class and doing a rehearsal of Swan Lake actually isn't is as it. bad as yeah. what other people are going through and and it's that it's that you know reality check isn't it really yeah so for and us, the it's enormous really good. the enormous give of what you know sat in the audience that you receive I call the Royal Opera House the home of my soul oh I come in here brilliant. and I just yeah. know everything's okay I yeah. just know that um, and to come and sit in and watch a ballet and um, I was seeing some photographs that people post on Instagram the other day and um, there was a beautiful one of Frankie Hayward uh, taking um, a curtain call oh my gosh and that smile the, oh my I gosh know. and the size of the curtains yeah. and the everything I mean, I and she just there. radiates she joy. does she yeah, really she, does yeah. and that is massive isn't it mm. so to be able to access that so in the old days I'd be sat thumbing through my ballet annuals you well, know exactly yeah. this is what I mean with Dancing Times that was the only way you accessed yeah. it seemed like a really remote world yeah yeah, yeah it was very very them and us and yes, very it was. detached it was but um but you know I've always said there is a, there is a definite element of what we do and of our job and our career is also the meet and greet side of it, the going to the stage door. I'm a big stickler for if I ever perform I always go out via stage door because there are those people that stand and wait. Yeah. And obviously they're not waiting for me, but sometimes you get the odd person that asks for an autograph I or think asks they are for a photo for you, photograph. For sure, yeah. So, you know, those sorts of things are really, really nice. And yeah. I think if you can make that effort from day one, it, I, I just think it's part of your job. Yeah, so I, it I annoys me when that. I find people going out different exits and all the rest okay. of it. Okay. Because, um, yeah, it's part and parcel of it's what we do. It's kind of nice to give back, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I absolutely. This is why I, I'm branching off onto something else. But to give back is something that I'm a big stickler for. And so, therefore, that's why I went ahead and did um, my charity galas yes. in Ipswich. Yes. Because I felt that what Ipswich had given me during the time of me growing up yep. and supporting me and everything that my teacher gave me and the support that I got from friends and family, um, I thought it was my time to try and generate a little bit of, you know... Well, you'll be a that huge inspiration within, for well, youngsters coming up as well, you know. Uh, that's well, what I hope so. I'm I certain so. of so, yeah. So. I, mean, I think we shared a story earlier when um, I came with a friend and Carlos came out of the stage door. I usually just stand back. I don't ever go in or right. I stand on the other side of the street, yeah. but I love watching. I can never believe you all just come out and, like, Monica Mason will walk off and go and catch the tube or oh, yeah, well, it blows what, me away. Well, that's what Darcy does. I, Darcy I know. just goes and gets the tube. I yeah, kind of want no. to just run in front of you and with glitter and petals. Think, <laughs> yeah, people think that we've got flashy cars and that we're all whisked yeah, off oh, by, with drivers. Well, and, that's not the no. case, is it? And that's what, you know, people always laugh because I'm always moaning on Twitter about my greater anger. That's right. I railway know. journeys. Yes, I, but I that is that. part and parcel of, you know... Yeah, it, daily life. That brings you... I mean, that's what's so extraordinary. I can be doing a worldwide cinema relay to the whole of Europe and the yeah. whole of Great Britain uh, as Drosselmeyer in the Nutcracker and within two hours I could then be sat on the Greater Anglia train waiting stuff. for it to yeah. leave yeah, yeah waiting for it to leave or that's being cancelled like or delayed that's just a complete yeah. um, opposite and had I not got those people on social media to interact with yeah that journey would be hellish yeah. but actually it's a it nice gives time me a break. to utilise so those it, yeah. people are helping me out okay. so, it's, so you know that's really lovely it is lovely and I love the thought of being able to once you've done something like a cinema relay interacting with all those that will then go ahead and put something on on a feed yes. that you know if you hashtag whatever the performance is I always like to at least like something or react to it because I think how 
amazing would that be that you're sat in watching the performance yeah. and then suddenly you've got somebody who's it? been in that performance then yeah. um, contact you. So. I, I've, I've actually done the um, cinema myself. I was a bit poo-pooish about it, if I'm being honest, when I first <laughs> went. Um, well, I think because some people think there is nothing like the Royal Opera House no, experience. No, and there isn't, so, is there? Let's yeah, be honest. It's yeah. an incredible thing. It's a gift, actually, is mm. what that is. But um, to go to the cinema, you see a different aspect. You see some of the interviews and a bit of the backstage, yeah. and that's really lovely. Uh, somebody posted the other day, um, Frankie Haywood and um, Alexander Campbell, doing a curtain call, and you were there. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, I saw it. Yeah, it yes. was fantastic just yeah. seeing them go out and hear that massive mm. roar. See, I, I mean, I put my hand up and said, please, I can open the curtain. I'll be happy yeah. to do that. Uh, so those kind of things on social media are real It's pleasure. very uplifting. When it you, is. And even if somebody posts a picture of your curtain call, I try and always repost it because, as you say, to have those sorts of things posted to you is... is 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 a gift because it's a gift back. Isn't when it, yeah. else would you capture that moment? You wouldn't. So it's it, very difficult. It wasn't to like that, that, you know. I always say when I do a performance, if you could bottle up, I always say, especially after something like when you've done Tibalt's death. Yeah, yeah. If I could bottle my feelings and that experience at that very yeah. time, oh. I oh, I'd Immense. be a rich man because to be able to share that that adrenaline rush and that that yeah. immense. Not the feeling of satisfaction, but just of sheer exhilaration is is just something that, you know, it's there and then it's gone. Yeah, so I, I, in the I blink think, of an eye. Yeah, and so I think to have people interact with you and send you those things, it's brilliant. And I think um, that comes across, my favourite thing about every ballet is the curtain call. I really? absolutely adore it. Yeah, Because everybody does it differently. I just want to yeah. say thank you to everyone, you know, and to see that you've loved it. And uh, one of my very very favourite things, it's so simple, is Dance of the Nights. Oh yes. It's Romeo so Juliet. commanding. Yeah. And the, the choreography is so simple, uh, but it... But that's why it's so impressive. It is. Yeah. And it really mm. kind of says everything to me about the ballet. There's no trying too hard, because the, the choreography doesn't warrant it, but boy oh boy does it come at you. Mm, um, it gives you an impact. It's, it's such an, an incredible impact. thing yeah. to, it must be incredible to be in it. Oh it is, yeah. it is. Um, you and Christopher Saunders, I always mark oh, you both out. when he's Lord yes. Capulet and yeah, yeah. One of the hardest things about that is that you've had the scene before, so you're all behind the cloth, right? or behind the street scene, yeah. and the cloth's down, and then it goes to a blackout. It does, yeah. And then the scene, and then literally the lights are up and you're on. And the hardest thing is, is literally your eyes refocusing. Yes, I'm sure. Because the, the blitz of the lights. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, well, sometimes it makes you quite dizzy. And I'm then you've sure. got that amazing dance that you've got to carry off. And the off music and, feel, yeah. and the command of it all. Yeah. It's incredible, yeah. I like it because, it, to me, it feels like the charge of an army. It feel, I you agree. Get really that understated, grandeur, though, isn't that it? real grandeur yeah. of who the Capulets are. Yes. Right from the beginning. It's very rich, isn't mm. it? Yeah, it's Certainly an incredible is. piece of theatre, yeah. I always think. Yeah, um, he's a very I, clever man, Mr. Kenneth McMillan. Oh, completely. So clever. Completely. And what a joy that you're able to... Oh, yeah, dances. I mean the choreographers that we work with now, and and their talents and their gifts that they give us. I mean, yeah, we're we're so fortunate, so lucky. So if we can just slide yeah, back sorry. to mental health a little bit here. Sorry. Um, no, it's great. <laughs> um, I just wondered how you protect your mental health because we didn't know oh. we had to do that really yeah. we didn't know we had to do that and people talk about it so much more mm. now um i know that i have to look after my mental health i drift off i can feel it happening mm -hmm. um i've become more aware of it um i went through a cancer diagnosis and um i became very aware of how i was operating as a person and when you're drifting off into down the spiral i call mm. it you know down the mm. spiral of doom um, I'm able to stop myself now, but in years gone by, I wasn't able to do that. And what tools do you use? To I come do that? here. You come here. I right. come here. Okay. I look at my ballet feed. I talk to my friends. I've got right. immense friends around me, right. um, and just to kind of get into other people's lives and realise actually, everything is okay. Mm. It is okay. You know, like I say, when I walk through these doors here, it is like a drug. It is. Yeah. I just think we're all right. We're okay. Yeah. There's just something super calming Do, for me. Is that because you sometimes feel that you're alone in dealing with it? 
Well, the interesting thing that I've learned over the years is that, you know, if you make a mistake, or even if you don't make a mistake, sometimes you pile rubbish on yourself and put yourself down. Yes. Um, and that's, that's, it's uh, ridiculous. Yeah, I'm used to that. But yeah. that's what happens. Because yeah, I think... Uh, In the ballet world, you're very critical uh, of well, yourself. Well, yeah. uh, very critical. You yeah. spent, I've spent 30 years of looking at myself, And ripping not yourself longer, to shreds, yeah. Uh, of looking at myself in a mirror. Yeah. So um, I do. I think that's where yeah. mine came from. I often say that because as a dancer, you're constantly looking in the yeah. mirror and correcting and body type, line, everything. shape. Yeah. Um, and and you know the point of what my job is now is obviously we are there to correct it, but we are very very self-critical people as yeah. dancers, and yeah. we are very aware of what what. Not necessarily which is what is right or wrong, but we know in ourselves what we want to achieve. Yeah. Um, and uh, and of course, I think because of the nature of what we do, it is all about achieving, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So. Um, and I think it's good to cr- you've got to critique yourself as a dancer. There's no way through without doing that. Mm. Um, but I think it's the letting go of that, and yes, actually then at the end difficult. of your day, saying to yourself, actually, I did a a decent job there yeah. it wasn't a disaster like you're I've, telling I've had something that's been going on this week I've been um, preparing myself for Onyegin um, and in Onyegin I have a very very difficult part um, pas de deux that I have to do you have to wait the whole ballet and then you appear in act three and you have this wonderful it's a dreamlike ballet it's beautiful yeah. and the pas de deux is just absolutely one of my favorites yeah but I have a mental block that halfway through one of my performances halfway through the pas de which lasts for about eight minutes, I felt sick. Okay. And I have a mental block with myself even now. Okay. That was about three, four, five years ago. But I have a mental block that whenever I hear that music and I get to that section, oh my God, this is where I felt sick. Right. And the demons of you working with that on a constant basis, even though it happened to me most probably six years ago, you still know that when that piece of music happens, it's going to come that's back. what you're going to think of. And that's the exact correct term for it. It is the demons yeah. that live in your head. Yeah. Um, I've learned to banish them off because actually, um, you know, nothing's as bad as it need, You know, as you're telling yourself, not generally. No. no um, right. So it's kind of keeping yourself in a top space, really. Um, we, we're very lucky today because we've sat next to a pneumatic drill or something. Yes, I did you in the kitchen? Yes, so. <laughs> I, I think it's because, well, we're sat at, in the amphitheatre of the Royal Opera House and um, they're actually rebuilding Bow Magistrates um, oh, okay. court into a hotel, I believe. Oh, okay. So, so, so you're yes. right, but, kind of butted <laughs> onto yeah, that. Yeah, yeah that's it's incredible. Um, so, going through a cancer diagnosis, I've learnt that nourishing your body and nourishing your mind are as equally as important. Yes. As a dancer, that must be a real fine balance and something that you're really acutely aware of. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I wish I could actually um, sleep more. Okay. I think that's one of my biggest um, deprivations is that I don't sleep enough. Right. Um, I think the way that I balance um, feeding my mind, I think, is, is purely with the amount of work that we do and with the incredible people that I'm surrounded yeah, absolutely, by. Yeah, absolutely, So I at no point feel bereft of, of having any nourishment no. or, or gaining any more knowledge because I just know it's like a trap On a day-to-day, yeah. Day, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. We're so lucky yeah. and I, I've never... I, I tell people not to become complacent about it because this place is full of history. It is. Full of, um, of amazing, amazing knowledge. Um, if it's not from the dancer side, it's from the opera side. If it's not from on stage, it's also from the technical people. Um, you know, you can go up to the wig department and watch somebody dressing a wig for a performance. I mean, it's an exceptional talent yeah. that all these people have. And, you, and to be surrounded by that on a daily basis, I'm very, very lucky surrounded to be Surrounded by brilliance so yeah. everywhere you very, look. Very, very yeah. lucky. But I think um, y- you have to be aware that like you say, I think you do have to get out there and and feed yourself with with maybe knowledge or or something that you feel is going to be sustainable. Yeah. Because I think sometimes you you can think you could almost have a quick fix of something. Yeah. 
Uh, but it's not necessarily no, going to last. it's not. So and things like as simple as um, we've both got dogs that we're besotted yeah. with. Oh, gosh. You know, taking yeah. the dogs for a walk and yeah. uh, finding yeah. a beach or whatever it is. I'm very lucky in. living in um, Suffolk, even though I don't spend enough time there. When I do have my Sundays, my Sundays are literally filled with trying to get out into the countryside, yeah. getting out on those country roads, having the top down on the car. Yeah taking the dog for a walk like you say looking at the big skies just so the that bigger you picture yes, yes right ready to start for another week yeah and that's really it's important especially when you're in such an intense environment mm. it's important to give your mind that yeah. play really it's Absolutely. letting it go out there and just be free of any thought yeah because um, you know my days are very long i sometimes yeah. leave suffolk in the dark and i arrive back in the dark right so you i am very very mindful that okay I've only got Sunday but I make the most of that Sunday and do you commute every single day I commute every day wow, that's even a big after ask. a performance so after yeah. a performance and it comes down at 10.30 yeah. I will be on the 11 o'clock train wow. if it's running wow. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> uh, not, not the 11 o'clock the 11.30 train okay. um, and that gets me back to Suffolk uh, for 1 o'clock I then have to drive home so I don't usually oh, get into boy. bed until half 1 but I, I've done six years of that now. Right. Okay. So my body clock is adjusted, and yeah, but you're used I, to you it. know, I have long days, and uh, hopefully that doesn't have an impact on on my on my performance. No, <laughs> um, well, I can tell you it does not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just to wrap up, um, I wanted to ask, what has been, if you have anything that's your favourite, but what has been the favourite thing about your career so far? Oh my gosh. Um, I think the people that I've been fortunate enough to meet, yeah. um, the extraordinary wealth of talent that I've been absorbed in yeah. um, and nurtured in and, and kind of accepted in. I think it's funny, when you're, when, I'm, when you're a youngster, I think you find it very difficult to know what you're going to do or, or how you're going to get there. But I've been... Um, I, I say it all the time, I've been very lucky. I seem to have had the right piece of a jigsaw at the right time, and I've been able to have this amazing jigsaw that I've put together. But I, I don't take it lightly, and I also think that, you know, when I was a youngster, I, I was always very open to, um, not to interpretation, but I was very open to listening to other people, to being guided by other people, because I think um, if you think, no, I'm not going to do that, no, I don't think it's going to get you anywhere. No, you've I think got to you be have brave to always be very, yeah, absolutely, you, you hit the nail on the head. You've got to be very brave about it and yeah. just almost allow what will be, will be. Yes. I yeah. think you have to be. Do you kind of feel that, that in yourself? I, yeah. uh, for me, I do. Um, you I, never know what's around the corner. You don't, and no. I, I hate to say it in the respect of becoming ill, yeah. but you never know. But there, there is always a challenge, I think, around the corner. There is. In whatever capacity it but is. But it's that kind of thing that shapes you, you know, and I, I look at myself uh, having gone through that diagnosis and the uh, bashing that I took um, from the treatment. And it's brought me into a much greater space now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I think, think I live my benefit. life too fearful. Yes. I love what you're saying because yes. I, I pass it on to my children now. They're mm. 18 and 16 and I don't want them to live fearful as no. I did. And I'm now stepping into my, if I can say it, my own brilliance. I've found myself. And that is priceless. Is it, yeah, is. it is. It uh, is So to have had that with the career you've had, and I know you all must carry that mm. with you because you couldn't do what you're doing if you don't. No step into that space yeah, yeah I, I, yes absolutely I mean every time you step on that stage yeah. you're, you're taking wow. a risk aren't yes, you yes you really are um, yeah. and, uh, and 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 not only physically but you're taking a risk mentally yes because it's are. a big deal it is it's a big deal that curtain goes up yeah there's a lot of people it doesn't get much you. bigger does it no no and you know that is a choice we've made but also uh, I it, it's a challenge that we've taken yeah. on board and, and the reward um, you get from it yeah, are immense yeah. which, is, which is going sort of full circle yes, to what we're is. saying about what what we give to people is also is great what people give back to us so yeah. it's that whole social media thing and yeah so um but yeah absolutely you never know what's around the corner so live every day yeah i love that as, so as if uh, i mean i know that's i don't want to sound naff by saying that but you 
every day is so valuable and every day you, there's something new to learn yeah I, I that's one thing that I really try and tell um, dancers when they're rehearsing is that you must never ever stop learning I have been doing this now 30 years I'm now in my 30 what for, 31st year of my career wow. and um, I still feel that every day I'm learning yeah because and because keeping that curiosity to yeah, learn as oh, well yeah, yeah I, I love it so um, and I, I just feel very fortunate that I've, I've been given the, the chance and the ability to be able yeah. to do this as a well, career I think we feel very fortunate that you have as well oh, to well, be thank fair you. definitely thank you. Uh, so my final question um, is really what's next for Gary Avis um, I know you've just next? been given your promotion and... Yes, so I'm now um, Senior Ballet Master yeah. um, and I'm also prin uh, Character Principal, which well, Principal Character Artist, um, so I have the best of um, both worlds, so yeah. I get to nurture and teach, yeah. uh, but I also get to perform these in incredible roles. I also have, a um, you know, there's another side of me which also does a lot of admin, so I have to do that on a daily basis so I do all of the cast sheets and stuff like okay. that so that's the thing that makes my brain keep ticking over yes. not yeah. only learning steps and notes but yeah. also the actual day-to-day -day of juggling around cast sheets and stuff like that so I think that's another thing that mentally keeps me very very um, alert uh, but what what's next for Gary because I don't know I I just I'm just very very lucky to do what I do and I think maybe if I'm a, if I'm allowed to carry on doing what I'm doing then Hopefully, you'll be here for a while. Yeah, yeah let's yeah. hope so. I, I hope so because yeah. um, I don't know. I mean, had I had the chance, I would have most probably become an architect. Oh, really? If I had had the chance. Or John Travolta or, I, or something yeah, like or, that. Or John Travolta. <laughs> Um, who knows, may, yeah. uh, you know, maybe a little bit of presenting now and again yeah. or something like that. Yeah, but, who uh, knows? But who knows? Well, uh, thank you so much for agreeing to do this um, I'm my thrilled pleasure. beyond measure it's like my favourite thing ever no um, well, I just hope whatever I've said may help others I'm certain it will and so. um, as you know for me you're a joy giver you've got a big heart and for that we're all grateful oh well thank you very much thanks it's so much pleasure Gary. to meet you thank you if you like this podcast like it comment on it or share it Thank you.